perfect. What's up everyone, welcome to the Auto 101. I wish I could say that we're in sunny California right now, but I don't know if you can see behind me. It's actually super cloudy and super foggy today. But nonetheless, we're in a convertible, we're in a Ford Mustang, and today we're taking a look specifically at a 2021 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. Now, this generation of Mustang was introduced in 2014 as a 2015 model year and refreshed sometime around 2018. So it's definitely been in the market for a long time. But there's not that many sporty cars that you could even buy in the segment anymore at this price point. So let's see how it stacks up as a sports car in California in 2021. So let's start off with something that I think is always important for a coupe, and especially a sports coupe, and that's the way that it looks. Now, this car was introduced uh, about six years ago, so the styling has become a little bit commonplace in that we've seen it around everywhere but I think that doesn't detract from the fact that it's a nicely styled attractive car. The Mustang was initially designed with an ethos of long hood and short deck and that's still something that you see with this current generation Mustang in 2021. I think for this convertible uh, it looks good with the top up and the top down. Obviously it looks better with the top down but a lot of the convertibles have a little bit of frumpy styling when the top is put up but I don't think that that's the case with this Mustang. I think it looks terrific outside. And the front has these great haunches over the front wheels that give it a nice aggressive stance. And the rear, with that short deck and those rear wheel drive proportions, it just gives it a very sporty, uh, fun look overall that really synchronizes well with the pony car and muscle car image of this car. On the inside, I think Ford has done a great job of bringing in some of their classic styling DNA from the original Mustangs in the 60s. Uh, you have this kind of double dome dashboard thing going on. It's very airplane themed in here. Material quality is relatively good. Um, good. Um, what also I think is great in the Mustang from an interior perspective is the practicality. There's relatively big storage compartments in the doors. I mean, you're not gonna be competing with a, with a Ford Explorer in terms of practicality, but for what this is, a muscle car slash a pony car slash a sports car, you have a decent amount of space. In the doors here, uh, even in the center, you have nice big cup holders, the glove box is big, the center console is big. I was recently at the 2021 LA Auto Show and I had the chance to sit in a Camaro and I'll tell you, the practicality in here is way better than the practicality that I saw in the Camaro and likewise for material quality. The door panels are nice and soft, the top of the dash is nice and soft. Uh, the armrest when you're sit sitting and driving is soft and the center console is also soft. So everything that you're touching is made out of a well thought out material, including the steering wheel. This car has a leather wrapped steering wheel. I always enjoy leather wrapped steering wheels and this one here is no exception. It's nice and big, which is uh, kind of a deviation from current sports car trends, but again, that's in line with muscle car trends from the 60s and I think it works well for this car. Quickly talking about infotainment. The dashboard in this particular model isn't anything spectacular. It's just a, you know, a tachometer, a speedometer, and a small little digital display in the middle. What's cool about that digital display is you have certain track apps. So you can talk about your, so sorry, you can look at your zero to 60 timing, your quarter mile timing, zero to 30 timing, your braking timing. So you got all kinds of cool stats when you go through that little infotainment screen in the middle. And that's just a cool thing to have in a sports car. In the middle here, you have Ford Sync 3. With that, you get CarPlay and Android Auto built in. When you have CarPlay and Android Auto built in, that's really the only thing that matters for me. Um, so CarPlay does a great job. It always connects well, pairs well to the system, no real syncing issues or interface issues or anything like that. So I have no complaints at all about the infotainment. And the sound system is also good for a convertible. Now let's talk about how this car feels to drive. So right now I'm on the highway, so it's a nice, comfortable cruise on the highway. I will say though, that the 10-speed automatic that's in this car 
when you're just cruising along on the highway, um, it tends to hunt through gears a little bit, which I thought was a little bit weird, but it's still manageable, not too bad. However, here in LA, I had the chance to drive this car through some canyon roads and some twisty mountain roads. And during that time, I found that this car was hunting through gears a lot more, especially in sport mode. Now, I think that that's a byproduct of the fact that this car has a 10-speed automatic transmission. So naturally, there's just a lot of gears to go through, and that's why it's doing all that. But it's just a, a little bit teensy bit annoying on those roads. On the highway here, though, like I said, it does go through those gears, but it's still a relatively comfortable drive, especially if there's only two people in the car. I think the rear suspension, even though it does have independent rear suspension, in the convertible model at least, I found it to be a little bit bouncy, uh, which makes it a little bit uncomfortable on the highway because it's not super smooth and super easy to drive. It's always like bouncing around a little bit. And I don't know if that's a fault of the car or if the highways here in California are just a little bit undulating and a little bit rough and that's what causes the car to bounce. But that's just what I know during my time with the car here. Now, let's talk about the powertrain. So clearly this car being the EcoBoost isn't what a real Mustang should be. I mean, in my mind, a real Mustang should always be a V8, even though it wasn't introduced with the V8 way back in the day. I think it became synonymous with those those big body V8s. Um, so this car has the EcoBoost, 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder. I didn't have super high expectations going in, but I will say that this engine is phenomenal. First of all, the power output is great. 310 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque. That is a lot from a, a around 2.3 liter four-cylinder engine. And trust me, when you're driving the car, it feels powerful. And it is, I mean, 310 horsepower is no laughing matter. That's how much the V8 in the Mustang made two generations ago. So it's not like it's some super low figure. And the fact that it's getting it from a four-cylinder engine is phenomenal. Now, it also sounds really good, but I feel like Ford may have pumped in some of the engine sound or even ha added some artificial audio through the speakers because it has kind of a V8 rumble when you give it gas, which is not typical of a four-cylinder, but regardless, it sounds natural. And the fact that it does sound like a V8 makes it a better experience overall when you're in the actual Mustang. And because it's a turbo, you get some of those turbo whistles every now and then as well. What's also great about this engine is fuel economy. Uh, when I've been driving around here, the fuel economy has been excellent. It's pretty much what you would expect from a turbocharged four-cylinder car, but at the same time, you're getting all this power and the experience and the driving dynamics of a muscle car and a pony car. So I think that that's a great, interesting balance that Ford has found between putting in a powertrain that will give you the feeling of a sports car and a muscle car while giving you the efficiency that you might need in an everyday car. So this is the convertible. So we obviously have to talk about the convertible top and the roof down driving experience. The convertible top is super easy to put down. You undo this clip, press this button, and in about, I'd say 20 seconds, I didn't really time it, but 20 seconds-ish, the top goes all the way down and the windows all down as well. So that's a pretty quick operation. It's a little bit slower on the way up, but not noticeably so. When you're driving with the top down, in inner city roads and those back backcountry twisty roads, mountain roads, and canyon passes. It's awesome to have the top down. You get incredible views. You get to really be one with the fresh air, one with nature, as corny as that sounds. But that is the benefit of convertible. So I really enjoyed that experience, and it was just a good place to experience that here in California. Obviously, being from Canada, we don't really get the chance to experience convertibles as they're intended to be very often, so it was nice to get that experience. So, what's my conclusion? How do I actually feel about this car overall? I think it's an awesome car. I mean, this car, convertible format in Canada, comes in around the mid-30s. And I think it's something similar in the States too, maybe the low 30s. And for that price point, you're getting a rear-wheel drive, performance car, convertible, powerful engine, efficient engine, nicely made interior with all the features and amenities you need. You can't really ask for more at that price point. It's a dwindling segment of car and we should be really fortunate and thankful that Ford is still putting in the energy and the resources to make a car like this and offer it at such an attainable and affordable price for so many people. Um, so I think overall, 
It's an incredible car. It definitely has its limited use cases, but if you're in a market and a climate where this car makes sense, then I would definitely 100% recommend it. And I can't wait to drive the convertible car again after this. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of the Mustang. Let me know what you think of its competitors, the Camaro. I feel like that's actually it. What else would you even compare with this car? The Miata. Camaro and Miata. Out of those three, which one would you pick? Drop down below, and I'll catch you guys next time.